fantastic. And recording has started. So, and uh, and um, then we'll, uh, we'll have also a few colleagues from uh, IGVA staff that are also uh, part of uh, members of the different ISC bodies that could say a word about uh, the work, the reality uh, of the, those um, bodies that we're going to talk uh, about today. Um, before we start, we'll do a quick tour de table, and my colleague uh, Fiona, who is assisting us on the technical side, is going to tell us who is online. And for the ones online, uh, Fiona should be able to see in the chat uh, all your comments and questions. Um, so don't hesitate to share your comments and questions for Mervat and for other uh, IGVA staff uh, later on. Um, and, uh, and Fiona, just if you can tell us who's online, that's uh, great. Okay, we online, we have Chris Gad from Danish Refugee, Refugee Council. Council. We have um, Constanza from Save the Children. We have Fakiri, which, who I think is also from Save the Children. We have Lise from Handicap International. We have Maddie Keros, I don't know which organization. We have uh, Niklas um, Storup from, I think that also from the Danish Refugee Council, but I'm not 100% sure. And we have Marco and Jerome from Iqba. Fantastic. Thanks. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining online. And in the room with us, in addition to some IGVA staff, uh, there's a lot of people from the IGVA Secretariat, actually. We still have a few members, so if, if you can introduce yourselves. Speak up. We've got Michael. So, uh, my name is Martha, and I'm with the Nursing. Julia Nursing. Andrea Nursing. Venetia of Women's Refugee Commission. Okay. And I uh, would say that others are uh, from uh, OCHA or uh, the ISC Secretariat and uh, IGVA, uh, IGVA Secretariat. So voilà. let's let's start. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yes, we've got about uh, 55 minutes uh, until uh, until 12 for for this meeting. So now the floor is yours, Mervat. Thanks mm -hmm. a lot. So good mor good morning, colleagues uh, here in the room as well as colleagues uh, online. Um, uh, definitely a pleasure to be back in IGVA. Um, I think last time I briefed it was before the, the new structures were endorsed by the principal, so it's actually good to have the chance to speak to you about the progress made since the new structures uh, were endorsed in January of this year, um, and speak to you a little bit about the transformations that have happened or are in the process of happening within the ISC structures. Um, but before I do that, um, and again, um, it's great to, to know who is online and who's in the room. Uh, I was hoping that there would be more colleagues from the Global South, but maybe there'll be another you know, opportunity. Uh, but having said this, I still want to mention a few words about the IASC, um, why it's an important platform, and why it is, sorry, sorry yeah, why it is critical for um, the work that we're doing, humanitarian in action. Um, as you all know, this IAC is a GA mandated body. It is the primary global uh, uh, platform to coordinate preparedness and response efforts for humanitarian crises. So it is the primary international global platform to do so. It is the only General Assembly mandated body that includes more than just UN agencies. I'm trying to move away from calling it non-UN entities because that in itself is uh, not very politically correct. So it includes NGOs, includes ICRC, IFRC, the World Bank, and others. It's really, really critical to emphasize that. And as a matter of fact, the quote-unquote non-UN members are a majority within the committee, more than the UN representatives in the committee. So it's important to recognize that, given the critical role and the critical voice that non-UN organizations have in the committee. Um, third um, uh, critical point to note is that the, the GA mandated the committee itself. It didn't mandate any of the other structures. So it's important to recognize that, in essence, it is the committee that has been mandated to take on this role to prepare for and respond to crises and it is chaired by the Emergency Relief Coordinator on behalf of the Secretary General. So it's actually the Secretary General's responsibility to lead preparedness and response effort to humanitarian crises, and this responsibility has been delegated to the Emergency Relief Coordinator to do it on his behalf. This is also quite important to note. And as you all know, um, there were certain uh, critical milestones in the life of the ISC 
um, that transformed the way the humanitarian system um, uh, functions or operates, including the humanitarian reform of 2005 and the transformative agenda of 2012. So again, just a few foundational facts about the, the committee to be uh, aware of. Uh, as you all know, uh, the, the committee itself has three primary TORs. You know, so there's the operational part. So how to, do we come together as members to better prepare for in a coordinated way um, uh, and respond to humanitarian crises? And there is the normative part, which is really the policy work, the guidelines, the tools, the standards, the procedures that are produced by the committee um, and endorsed by the committee members. And third, also underlying all of this is the advocacy efforts of the committee members, but also the other structures. So, um, and you can do, go down two slides if you don't mind. <laughs> um, so why uh, was the ISC uh, structures reformed? It was reformed for a number of reasons. First is that um, in addition to the reformed IC structures that were endorsed in January of this year, uh, the principals also endorsed a new biennium work plan covering the 2019-2020 period. And we believed, of course, that form follows function. So the structures <laughs> underneath the committee itself needed to be reformed to cater to these new uh, strategic priorities and the biennium work plan and ensure that the structures are fit to deliver on these priorities and the vision set by the, the principles. So form follows function. That was the primary reason. Second reason is because um, and there's been quite a few evaluations, uh, reviews of the ISC structures and how they have been performing uh, in the past years. So there was no lack of enough evidence and information with regards to how the ISCC structures can be strengthened. And there was recognition that there were areas that needed to be improved considerably. One of which is um, the field focus. Uh, a lot of, and, for, and, I, and I hear, I, and I heard this a lot from a lot of the humanitarian coordinators. I, myself, even before joining the ISC Secretariat, uh, had very little visual with regards to what the ISC was doing, was producing. Um, and I was even in New York, so I was even, you know, in the global sort of sphere. Um, but a lot of the humanitarian coordinators, before I took on the job, I also spoke to a number of the humanitarian coordinators, and they had very, very little visual in terms of what the ISC was doing. So this is something that, again, is work in progress. I can't say that we've cracked it, but it is at the center of what the new structures are, um, uh, the lens from which they are operating. How can all of this work eventually lead to better response, effective response on the ground. So that field uh, focus and that field lens by which the different structures are, oper are operating is a critical mindset shift that needed to happen. And again, it is work in progress. It's not, not easy to, to of course, um, make the shift uh, overnight, but I can assure you that it is within the minds of um, colleagues that are working on these, um, and these different groups. The third, um, of course, reason for the reform was um, um, uh, there was concerns in the past with regards to the disconnect between the normative arm of the ISC and the policy uh, and the operational arm of the ISC. So the emergency directors group and the working group were not speaking to each other. Um, policy is not done for the sake of policy. Policy is done for the sake of improving operational response. So there needed to be a way to strengthen the linkages between the normative arm as well as the operational arm. And we can already see progress in that um, with the chairs of both the OPAG, which I will speak to in a minute, as well as the EDG being invited and participating in each other's meetings. So we'll have, for instance, the chair of the EDG participating, not in the whole OPAG meeting, but part of the OPAG meeting uh, next month, um, with the chairs of both groups having uh, quarterly uh, uh, meetings to discuss how they can better collaborate and exchange information, with them being, you know, in copy of each other's messages so that they know how the operational aspects affect policy and vice versa. Uh, and not to mention that almost 30 or if not 40 percent of the OPAG members are actually EDG members. So again, encouraging the EDG members that are part of the normative arm of the ISC to speak up and ensure that these linkages happen, um, you know, systematically. And finally, um, um, there's been also taskings from the Emergency Directors Group Annual Review of Operations. They tasked the OPAC to work on three particular themes to help them in their work. One is on the impact of counterterrorism legislation <coughs> and current action. The other is on bureaucratic impediments that the NGOs are facing and how to address them or deal with them or um, um, find solutions to address them. And the third is on mainstreaming protection. So this is a tasking that came directly from the EDG group 
to the normative arm of the ISC. So that linkage between operation and, norm and the normative arm of the ISC was critical. And again, it's work in progress. It doesn't happen organically. Um, and then the last reason for the reform is the aspect of inclusivity. And I think inclusivity is, is an overused word. I can't say that we have, um, I think we've made huge progress in the structures, but I think we're still not where we need to be. I think we're inclusive, um, especially when it comes to the results groups, and I'll speak to the results groups in a minute, in terms of, and that was one of the criteria, as a result group, we need to move away from the naval gazing exercise of IRC members speaking to each other and formulating policies and standards. Um, they need to reach out and engage with expertise and skills outside of the IRC membership. So I was just mentioning to Manuela earlier today, for result group four on humanitarian development collaboration, they're working very closely with development initiative, with OEC DAC, uh, with the JSC, the Joint Steering Committee, <coughs> on the development of the Collective Outcomes Guidelines. Um, result Group 2, um, which is dealing with accountability and inclusion, you know, deal, deals with CHS Alliance, um, um, uh, and many other um, uh, stakeholders that are not members of the ISC. And this is part of the performance evaluation of each result group, is the extent to which they are reaching out and engaging systematically with organizations and stakeholders outside of the ISC membership. But again, what I'm still seeing is that it's still the global north. We're still not doing enough in terms of reaching out and capturing the perspe perspective systematically of global south uh, actors. So this is an area that you know we need to um, uh, push forward, and it will be raised in the next OPAC meeting because it's something that we've uh, we've uh, we've seen. Um, so that is the the um, uh, finally. So and and the final um, uh, shift that has happened with the reform is um, the need to de deliver on concrete results. Uh, you know, we've seen in the past, um, sometimes there are really great discussions happening within task teams or sub-working groups or working groups, but then nothing comes out that can be shared with the world. Or there are many deliverables along the way that are not exposed or shared with the other structures or the broader humanitarian community. So we're really pushing and working closely with the different structures to make sure that the very good work that they're doing is socialized, is made available, that we're more, we're doing more webinars to speak about the good work that colleagues, you know, are doing. Um, to give an example, um, frankly, before even taking on this job, I had very little exposure to the work being done on mental health and psychosocial support in humanitarian crisis. And I don't know how many people are exposed to the brilliant work that the previous, uh, the current reference group on mental health and psychosocial support does, co-chaired by WHO and IFRC. Brilliant work. Uh, not only in terms of developing of development of the guidelines, but also in terms of, you know, they've established different working groups on this particular theme, I believe in 13 different contexts. And the reference group members, primarily the chairs, go out regularly to support, um, uh, provide technical support these, to these sub-working groups to make sure that the guidelines are actually operationalized. So it's not just a nice, you know, guideline that, you know, if we're lucky we have the chance to go through it, but they actually are making an effort to socialize and oper operationalize these guidelines. So this is really, really critical. So this is, you know, in a nutshell why um, the reforms um, have uh, happened. Um, maybe in the next slide, I'll just mention um, very briefly uh, what are the five strategic priorities that were endorsed by the principals in January of this year. It's important to know what are these five strategic priorities because the structures were built around these five strategic priorities. If you go to the next uh, slide, um, so you will see that, you know, in terms of the strategic priorities, it's very, it's all encompassing. Um, and, and, I, and I'll confess I was a bit concerned when we rolled out the strategic priorities because it included everything under the sun when it comes to humanitarian action and beyond. And, um, and, and I was also concerned to the extent to which we would be able to deliver on, on these strategic priorities. But, um, you, know, you know, this is part of, you know, the consultation process we needed to include uh, you know, areas that are, are of importance to the different um, members. Um, um, and, uh, you know, it is a framework to guide the work of the ISC. Um, so the five strategic priorities are, the first one is an oper on operational response, and it covers a wide range of issues from protection to strengthening humanitarian leadership to uh, strengthening preparedness and early warning um, and that link it to the early warning and early action report and what can we do more to ensure that the early action aspect, because we're, as a system, we're good in terms of having an overview of the early warning aspects, but we're very weak when it comes to joint coordinated 
early action. Different agencies, different organizations uh, may place value in the early action component, but there is benefit and strength in the collective <coughs> approach of preparedness rather than, you know, siloed uh, approach of different organizations. Um, it includes uh, also addressing the bureaucratic impediments faced by uh, NGOs, amongst many other uh, topics. This is just to give you a few highlights, and I know, as you mentioned, Emanuela, there are colleagues around the table that can speak to the actual work happening in each of the results groups. Um, the second strategic priority is um, on um, enhancing accountability and inclusion, and that also covers a wide range of issues, from accountability to affected people, to the inclusion of persons with disabilities in humanitarian action, and very soon you'll see the new guidelines, <laughs> new guidelines on inclusion of persons with disabilities. Uh, it's uh, scheduled to be launched on the 12th of November. Um, uh, it includes prevention of sexual exploitation and, <clears throat> abuse and sexual harassment and abuse, um, uh, as well as uh, uh, gender. Uh, the third strategic priority is on uh, collective advocacy. And here also we have a wide range of issues, but to mention that part of the focus of the group is on addressing the impact of counterterrorism legislation. And the group actually did fantastic work, but not alone. It was this is one actually a beautiful example of how you know um, uh, co coordinated and uh, coherent efforts from across the system can result in change. And you've all heard about the possibility of including Al Shabab and this is the can one of the member states' uh, proposals as part of the sanctions regime, and if it not, had not been for the work of NGOs approaching capitals, um, OCHA colleagues in New York working with member states, uh, the result group members working with the GHG, the Global Humanitarian Donorship Group, to support and advocacy efforts to uh, ensure that there's an objection to this proposal, the outcome would have been different and we would have definitely felt it on the ground. So that's an example of what, what you know, a collaborative and a coordinated effort in advocacy can really make a difference. So um, addressing the impact of counterterrorism legislation is one key uh, piece of the work. Um, they're also looking at pulling together a best practices document in terms of negotiating with um, non-state uh, armed groups. Um, and they're also doing, although I think they're struggling a little bit in terms of pulling together key messages around um, critical key events that are happening, uh, including, you know, the Geneva Convention, the Convention on the Rights of the Child, uh, amongst other. And you, so far, they are developing key messages that they're sharing amongst themselves. But um, I'm hoping that eventually we'll, he, we'll reach a point where we can actually have a, um, a coherent ISC key messages or, or position or statement on, on some of these uh, issues. And we haven't even touched this, the context. This is all just thematic. Um, the fourth uh, group is, um, or the fourth strategic priority is on humanitarian development collaboration. And there, the group is covering a wide range of issues, and they're doing really fantastic work in terms of the del del deliverables. Uh, they're almost done in, um, with their work uh, to finalize key messages on humanitarian development collaboration. Uh, believe it or not, this has been an ongoing <laughs> task for the past two years. Um, 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 and the second is also the working, as I've mentioned, with different partners to develop guidelines on collective outcomes. And the third area of work that they're involved in is also developing a best practices document on humanitarian development collaboration that can be beneficial to uh, you know, HCs and field uh, colleagues. And again, the good, the good news there is that, um, and that was a concern that existed in prior years, is that there was a disconnect between the work that the ISC groups were doing in humanitarian development collaboration and that of the Joint Steering Committee that was chaired by the DSG. Um, but, you know, with thanks to the co-chairmanship of the group, um, uh, this linkage is much stronger, and they're also looking at how they can provide systematic technical support to field colleagues <coughs> on, on the issue. And the last group, which I won't go into in much detail because IGVA is a co-chair of this last group, is on humanitarian financing. And basically, how can we make sure that we have more money and how can we di diversify and how we can be innovative and more efficient in terms of how we use the, the funds. But I won't speak to that in detail uh, now. Okay, so that's uh, in a nutshell uh, what the five strategic priorities are and a sample of some of the areas of work that they are involved in. And if we go to the next uh, slide, um, this is an overview of the new structures hasn't changed considerably from the previous structure, because in the end, looking at the terms of reference of the committee itself, um, we needed an operations arm, which is the emergency directors group, 
uh, don't break what works well. And we have a really well-functioning emergency directors group, which is uh, chaired uh, by the OCHA director of operations. Um, and of course, they deal and they, uh, with day-to-day -day crises. Um, and they are actually a critical group that provides uh, advice to the committee itself with regards to which crises need to be scaled up in the new system that has replaced the L3 system, which crises need to be scaled up, why or why not. So uh, they play a critical advisory role to the committee. There's also a deputies forum group. That's a new structure that was established, chaired by the deputy emergency relief coordinator, um, uh, ASG of OCHA. Um, and it, uh, the members are the um, ASGs or equivalent uh, deputies from the different membership, and they were quite critical in the formulation of the new IC structures. Uh, they've had a number of meetings in the past, one of which was uh, to um, ensure that there was uh, a better visual uh, with regards to critical processes that may affect humanitarian action. So we had the chance to hear from SRSG Louise Arbor uh, previously on the migration um, um, uh, compact. Uh, we've also had uh, the chance to hear from Robert Piper also several months ago on the UNDS reform. So this is really the platform where you know strategic dialogue and discussions um, uh, take place. Um, the uh, third box is really, um, and I always say that for the ISC, there are really three primary boxes. The deputies forum for strategic dialogue, the emergency director group for operations, and the third box is the OPAC, which is the operational policy and advocacy group. And uh, they are supported by the five results groups. Um, and this is really where the normative work is taking place. There's a shift here because previously the normative arm of the ISC was chaired by um, uh, the Deputy Emergency Relief Coordinator of OCHA. This is the first time that we have um, IC members uh, other than OCHA that are chairing this group. So here we have um, the Deputy Secretary General of NRC, Ger Ola, who's uh, co-chairing this group along with the ASG of WP, Valerie Gunieri. Um, and they've been doing amazing work since they've, took on, uh, since they've taken on the uh, co-chairmanship. Um, again, they are supported by these five results groups, and there are five results groups because we have five strategic priorities. I already mentioned what the strategic priorities are, but just to give you a flavor or a sense of how we've made an effort to ensure um, ownership of the different structures by um, other than UN <laughs> organizations. Uh, so we have the first results group. It's co-chaired by both Interaction and OCHA. Uh, the second one is the only one where we have, have two UN agencies, and it's primarily because of the chairmanship, uh, the championship of the PSA SHA work. Uh, so we have UNICEF and UNHCR there. And then the third results group on collective advocacy is co chaired by UNFPA and Save the Children. The fourth one on humanitarian development collaboration is co chaired by Oxfam and UNDP. And last but not least, the financing one co chaired by IGVA and uh, OCHA. So um, <coughs> This is, um, oh, importantly, there's one more box all the way to the right, and it's the entities associated with the ISC. And this is a bit of a mixed uh, group, um, and um, uh, we will have a dedicated discussion at the second OPAC meeting on the 7th and the 8th of November to talk about uh, what these entities are, uh, what does it mean when we say that they are accountable to the OPAC, because as part of the restructuring uh, paper, they are accountable to the OPAC. Um, and how to ensure that you know uh, there are stronger linkages uh, with regards to the work that they do with the different structures in the ISC. And the entities associated with, with the ISC are the following. There's the Global Cluster Coordination Group, which is chaired by OCHA. Um, uh, and we are having quite a few discussions with them in terms of how um, they can be strengthened in terms of more focus on field support. And already we're starting to see some positive progress in that uh, they're looking at um, the outcomes of EDG missions as well as peer-to-peer -peer missions to look at cluster or intercluster issues that need to be addressed. And they're prioritizing that in terms of support, work in progress, but at least we're heading in the right direction. There's also the HPC uh, steering group, which is also chaired by uh, OCHA. And just recently they you know, shared guidelines on the new HPC uh, tools. Uh, the third uh, group is the Interagency Humanitarian Evaluation Steering Group. Um, and um, we're also engaging with them to ensure that, uh, you know, as part of evaluations and audit, audits and reviews, 
we're trying to ensure that um, there are stronger linkages with the peer-to-peer -peer group, uh, which, by the way, is an IC structure that reports to the EDG, um, and also to see how um, they can um, uh, support us, or especially the, op the OPAG, in terms of <coughs> systemic issues that need to be addressed. Um, uh, we'll have the chance to uh, uh, hear from them, probably not in this coming OPAG, because they're not ready yet, but most likely the following uh, OPAG to see how they can support us in this uh, work. And then there are two reference groups. Uh, one is the Mental Health and Psychosocial Support Reference Group and, uh, uh, and the Gender Reference Group, and both of which are doing, uh, you know, brilliant work. But still, because they are now part of the, the, the IC uh, um, uh, structures, we need to have a better sense of what they are doing, and especially if there are products and guidelines that are being developed, if it's going to have the IAC logo, then there has to be some way to ensure that uh, it is endorsed or at least reviewed by the OPAC before it goes out as an endorsed IAC document. Uh, so that's in a nutshell, just a quick, quick, quick overview of uh, what's happening in the world of the IAC. And, you know, over to you again, Emani Thank you, Mervat. Thanks for this uh, presentation. And, uh, and for the second part, I will try to join the dots with what uh, ICVA Secretariat does and uh, where we are actually in those different uh, bodies. And um, with the help actually of my, some of my colleagues that no, not all of them could join the conversation today, but we, uh, we still have a, a few ones actually, Alon sitting next to me and, and Marco who is online. Um, and I start with me. <laughs> That's, um, not that I'm sitting at, uh, at the principles, but uh, just to, uh, to start with the principles to mention that um, our uh, executive director, uh, Ignacio Packer, and also the chair of IGVA board, Anup Sukumaran, are the ones representing IGVA network at the principles. And for the principles, what is interesting to know is that there is a, a meeting, in-person meeting twice a year. So the next one is coming on the 5th of December, if I'm correct. It's, a, it's usually a, a one-day one meeting when you have all the heads of uh, agencies and uh, uh, all the members of, uh, of, uh, of the ISC. With, um, and there are also two, I mean, in the ISC, what is important also to mention is that you don't have only IGVA represented, but you have also two other NGO consortia. There is also SCHR and Interaction, and, uh, and all of us, we come along with some NGO members. So um, exactly, so normally two, uh, two NGO members in the different, uh, in the different bodies. Uh, at the principles, they usually go through um, a horizon scanning with uh, looking at some specific context uh, in particular. And also, to they have a standing item actually at the agenda, which is PSCA, and um, they also deal with a few policy uh, policy issues. So definitely, I mean, for this specific one, and um, uh, the agenda will uh, will be shared on due time with uh, with our members. Uh, you mentioned the uh, I won't talk about the deputies forum because um, the the last one was uh, a few months uh, ago. And uh, there will be another one from what I heard, but I, I don't know when yet. So <laughs> um, then for the, um, I can speak about the, uh, the EDG because I, uh, I represent IGVA Network at, uh, at the EDG myself. And I'm happy to know that uh, Chris Gad is online because uh, DRC is, uh, and Chris uh, is uh, one of uh, the NGO that comes under the umbrella of uh, IGVA at the EDG. And uh, the other uh, NGO is uh, Terre des Hommes with uh, Stephen Frico. Um, just for, for us, for you colleagues to know also, we rotate uh, for members of, uh, of the EDG, uh, we rotate every year, uh, one person every year. So not for IGVA Secretariat, but for the two, uh, two NGOs coming, uh, coming along. And definitely, as you mentioned, I mean, you were discussing about the uh, ongoing crisis, um, the ones that uh, would need uh, uh, extra support, extra support to the leadership, extra, extra support to the HCTs. Um, lastly, we discussed intensively about the Syria, uh, the northeast of Syria. We discussed also about Nigeria. That were the last, uh, uh, the last calls that, that we had. We've got two in-person meetings per year. Uh, one main one in, in January, but we have a lot of other calls uh, that are really uh, impromptu, that really uh, are um, at the last minute uh, calls because of the emergency and, and onset uh, disasters. Um, for what is important to, to note is that the biggest in-person meeting is uh, at um, 
at the end of January, beginning of February this year, actually. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we will go through the, I would say, uh, 20, 20 something uh, uh, operations that are ongoing. And usually we look at collectively how we can better support our colleagues that are uh, delivering assistance and protection uh, on the ground. So trying at a <coughs> collective, uh, collective uh, uh, outcome, uh, not really an <laughs> outcome of the next sense, but collective supports. And um, the second day is also on the uh, appraisal of humanitarian coordinators, and for that you receive uh, uh, information on due time because you all participate into that. Um, the other body I'm going to say a quick word on is on, uh, on the OPAC. So uh, what we've got our um, director of policy, uh, Mirella Shuteriki, who's, uh, who's the one representing it by network. And um, we have also four members of IGVA, uh, and it's very unusual, uh, I would say. Um, we, had a, we have a Mary Pack from IMC, but we've got also colleagues from three national NGOs. And uh, I say it's unusual because we asked, actually, and, and it went through, uh, extra seats for national NGO colleagues. So they have also a say. Um, at, uh, at the table of, uh, of the ISC and at the OPAC. So we've got also colleagues from uh, FRD Pakistan. Uh, we have, uh, so Asmat Khan, we've got uh, Reza Shadori from Coast and, and Fiona Gal, who's representing Akbar, who is, which is the um, NGO forum in, uh, in Afghanistan. So they will be joining the, the next meeting on uh, the, the 7th and 8th of, uh, of November. We, uh, I've just shared this morning with you, actually, the, um, the agenda of the meeting. Um, lots will be to, uh, to review the work of uh, the results group, as far as I understand, but uh, with a, the, an emphasis on some specific topics for each results group. Uh, to, to uh, enable to have a, a, a deep dive discussion on, on specific uh, topics and with a few other uh, sessions, as you mentioned, with the peer-to-peer -peer and extra uh, beforehand. So that's, um, that's it. Um, then for the results group one uh, at ICVA, I'm uh, the one uh, representing uh, the network. Uh, we've got also a few members with the uh, impact, Save the Children and Mercy Corps, that are also following the work of uh, the results group. What is interesting with the results group is that, uh, well, as far as I understand, each results group has its own way of working, uh, so its own frequency in meetings. For us, at, uh, the, the results group one is every two months uh, or every quarter, but uh, we've got subgroups uh, focusing on uh, specific priorities. And um, so I cannot focus on all of them, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm working on the bureaucratic impediments faced by NGOs and also on uh, how to strengthen uh, uh, leadership. But uh, indeed, I mean, there is also the, the, the one that will be also discussed at the OPAG on uh, mainstreaming uh, protection uh, in, uh, in all our work, <laughs> let's say. Um, and for results group two, uh, Alan, if you can say a, a word. Yeah, so the results group two on accountability and inclusion, uh, co-led by, uh, co-chaired by UNICEF and UNHCR, took mostly the topics and priorities from the previous uh, catchy named uh, accountability to affected population and protection from sexual exploitation and abuse testing, uh, incorporating some uh, work uh, on standards a bit, a bit more, so it's also more focused on inclusion now. Uh, we meet monthly. Uh, this is, I think, by far the results group with the largest work plan, and uh, <laughs> it's if you compare the size of four pages for results group five, where I am, and the one with like nine pages for results group two, that's definitely a big change. Um, the focus there is on, um, as I said, as accountability to affected population, uh, informing the work uh, that we are doing, uh, connecting better to regional networks. Uh, so there's a word to say about participation from, as uh, Merpat said, Global South or uh, national local NGOs, etc. is that um, it is difficult uh, somewhat to include them in that work, uh, maybe because um, 
Well, we have uh, the language that we are using is quite technical. Uh, we don't have uh, ways to sponsor them to attend in person. Uh, so those are uh, some of the problems that uh, we have. So the idea was, uh, and also of course, the results group is now co-chaired by two UN agencies. So there are less slots for NGOs inside of the results group. So the idea was to have a priority where we try to connect externally from the ISC membership to existing networks, and that is <coughs> ongoing and uh, co-led by ICVA together with CHS, uh, CDAC, uh, and others. Um, there's uh, the main bulk of priorities is again on uh, protection and response to sexual exploitation and abuse and sexual harassment. Uh, where there is a lot of work mostly taking the existing work that the different agencies and NGOs are doing and putting them in a way that uh, avoids duplication and increases collaboration. Uh, there is also an attempt to do a global platform for resources, guidance, etc. And maybe the new element is mostly the standards people with disability, gender, age, uh, et cetera. Great, thank you, Alan. On, um, in the results group three, so I'm also the one representing uh, IGVA network. Um, we meet every uh, every month. We have a we have a call every uh, every month, and uh, definitely, as Mervet said, uh, the group has been pretty active on um, counterterrorism measures, um, trying to find some common messages and uh, and getting them. Um, uh, through the uh, different ISC uh, members, uh, also gathering, collecting input also for s uh, some specific events like the climate summit uh, and having some uh, collective uh, collective advocacy messages on uh, on that. Um, still, still need to uh, to continue, and uh, I mean it's a work in progress. Uh, uh, definitely, I mean it's advocacy, collective advocacy. But what is a good uh, a good output from uh, from this group is uh, to have all those uh, members around the table and uh, and sharing their messages and trying to get uh, others to be involved also in uh, in uh, in the in the group and in the thematic that at each of us are following. On uh, results group four, I think we've got Marco online. Uh, Marco, if you can unmute yourself and say a few words about uh, what the group is achieving. Yes, good morning everyone, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, yes, very quickly, because the, some of the points or the, the priority areas have been in a way already listed by Merwat. Uh, basically, uh, I confirmed the guidance of collective outcomes. It's something that is going on. Actually, in this moment, there is a consultant uh, uh, reaching out to, to actors, to, to the multi-stakeholder dimension, if you want, of, uh, of, of the actors uh, uh, gravitating around the, the nexus, uh, in order to develop uh, a previously prepared um, light guidance on the collective outcomes. That would be basically the IAC uh, tool to be provided to the HCRCs in order to navigate around the particular issues around the principles, for instance, but also the importance of the centrality of protection and other stuff like, uh, uh, like that that is becoming more and more uh, important and more elaborated than it was uh, uh, during the time of the task team, the, 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 the previous uh, body um, uh, tackling the uh, the nexus for the for the for the IEC. Uh, also, the dissemination of the good practices. Uh, of course, there there is a, a lot of also with of uh, uh, relation with uh, the JEC as it has been mentioned, but also with the uh, former UN DOCO, uh, the current uh, UNDCO. Here I have a, a slightly different angle from an NGO perspective. It is true, perhaps, that the result group has been approaching and, uh, and relating better than before with the JSC. Uh, from an IAC perspective, perspective that may be true. From a, a, an NGO perspective, this is absolutely unsatisfactory for us because of the structure of the JSC. This is something that the RG uh, group knows to, uh, to. I mean, because we recall the, the problematic of NGOs being excluded uh, formally by by the JSC as much as then at the operational level in UNHCT. And so there are some some issues in the uh, joint analysis and joint planning where NGOs basically are not formally invited to the table. The third element uh, is uh, the linkages with peace, uh, as the name of the uh, of the result group uh, uh, 
uh, recalls, this is a group that is basically focusing on humanitarian development, not as such mandated to develop a link with, uh, with the peace component. Nevertheless, it has among its ambitions and focal area, uh, focus area, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the need basically to better relate with peace. This is something I think I would say the colleagues in the result group probably would agree with me is the least of the developed uh, areas uh, where we are, but it's, uh, you know, it, it is, it, it, it match well with the, uh, with the mandate that we, we got. Uh, the last is the support to country operation. Uh, so far in the, in the lifespan of the result group, there hasn't been a um, country, direct country, in-person support uh, as opposed what, with what happened now with uh, uh, the task team, but there are talks for a number of countries that would receive, they have requested and they would receive a support basically uh, from the result group in the development of uh, either collective outcomes or, uh, or something. Uh, there is also the sharing of data and analysis, uh, and again, there's the link with the JS. Among other two, two elements, just two, 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 two lines. Uh, one is that we are very happy that uh, it is co-chaired by an NGO, and this has provided also to be very useful for NGOs because there is also, you know, way a different touch uh, from an NGO than the other other uh, actors. So we are able to to, to support. Um, in terms of uh, aim, uh, everything I mean is really a cross-cutting element that comes in all the calls, all the works is really to be as pragmatic as we can in order to provide elements, tangible tools for the ground team, for the field operations in order to navigate this pretty complex, rather than complex, vague uh, dimension of, of the Nexus. Uh, and so to help them to uh, pragmatize if you want it. Uh, the last thing is basically there are, of course, sub-working group. One is the one on collective outcomes. One that ICBA has the pleasure to co-chair is the community of practice on the Nexus. Again, showing how the attention to the field dimension where practitioners from the field level, maximum uh, regional level, but we try to remain at the country level as much as we can, do convene uh, online every two months, uh, basically uh, expressing or describing the result and the, the, the achievement, of course, but also the, the challenges at the ground level in order then to share, to create, uh, again, within a community, a sense of, uh, uh, of capacity to share information, uh, share tips, uh, if you want, uh, in order to come out with uh, pragmatical uh, solutions on that. As ICVA, ICVA alone, for members, we have also a um, NGO, oh, sorry, uh, a Nexus uh, uh, ICVA members working group where we disseminate information, we collect uh, uh, the, the, the requests from the NGOs, but also we try to consult as much as we can members on all the processes that pertain to the result. I think this is it, this is it in a nutshell. Ah, um, an, an element that maybe is of interest because it has been, uh, it has been raised by Merwat. Um, we are very happy that we have been able to include a national, an Iraqi national NGO in the result group, in a way coming closer to the Global South representation. Over. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Marco, and spe especially for this last point, because uh, it's maybe something that is missing in the different results group. We try to have some uh, some members of the different NGO consortia, but uh, we're still lacking uh, uh, NGOs, national NGOs, uh, that could be part of those, uh, of those results group. Um, for the, five, uh, the fifth uh, results group on humanitarian financing, I'm gonna ask Alan to, uh, to briefly um, drive us through it. Just, I wanted to mention something that is, we are the co-chair of uh, this, uh, advise the co-chair of this uh, results group. And um, just as uh, also um, uh, Marco said, I uh, forgot to mention, but uh, you've got four NGOs that are co-chairs of the results group on, on, over the five uh, uh, groups. Uh, you've got interaction for the first one, and you've got uh, Save the Children for the uh, one on advocacy, the Oxfam for the fourth one, and uh, INFA for the uh, fifth one. And NRC on the OPEC. And exactly, in addition to NRC uh, as the co-chair of the OPEC. Alan. So on the results group five on your mind time financing, co-chaired by Ikva and Ocha, we meet monthly. The priorities are uh, mostly revolving around four priorities of uh, financing, financing instruments, so financing financial aspects of the nexus, if we want. So that's a place where we connect a lot with the results before. Uh, it's also about innovative approaches to humanitarian financing, where ICVA is leading on Islamic social financing efforts. 
Um, there's um, a lot of work being done on uh, multi-year humanitarian planning and animal funding, so quality funding work, and also on the simplification and harmonization of UN systems, where there is the work on the UN con partnership contract harmonization and work that uh, NRC has been leading on cost, uh, cost classification. Um, I would say that this is the result group where we have the most similar structure to the previous task team before the restructuring. Uh, it's also quite maybe humble in what it's trying to achieve. And um, I would say that this is also what where NGOs have taken very much the lead. Actually, the UN agencies are not leading many of the activities there. Uh, and that's maybe something in general in the result group, the fact that NGOs are coming through the networks and we tell them that they need to commit to something, to lead on something or to support <coughs> something if they want to uh, sit at the table, makes them usually be leading activities while, uh, yeah. Over. So, so interesting, this last point, because, you know, like um, when I had the all co-chairs meeting, there was concerns that it was the other way around. Maybe it's different for RG5, but for the other groups, there's actually more NGOs leading sub-working groups than UN agencies. And it's like, you know, what's going on? Like, no, 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 that, no, that's no, exactly what I'm saying. It's exactly the same. Actually. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that when we bring NGOs to the table, we, we ask them to commit to lead or support something, while the full members of the ISC sometimes just come to sit in the room and they don't take on themselves yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. Not new uh, yeah. initiatives. Maybe just one other thing on the result group five, and it's actually thanks to the previous task team, um, you know, the humanitarian uh, financing the nexus study, which was co commissioned by NRC, UNDP, and FAO, uh, you know, of course, was produced and launched. And the idea is that the result group would take some of these recommendations, identify which recommendations they can take forward. Um, um, so I, I think that's also a positive thing. Right. Well, thank you very much, um, colleagues, <laughs> for, for that. Um, now I will open the, the, the floor the, for the last minutes uh, uh, for comments and, uh, and questions. So if you have uh, any, please raise your hand for people that are in the room or just, uh, um, Fiona, you're monitoring the chat box. So let me know if there is something uh, coming. There is something already or nothing. All right. Yes, uh, Julien and then Manisha. Um, just, uh, just a couple of questions. Um, how long is the current system, particularly the result groups, expected to last? Um, so it's kind of the timeline. Um, and then there's there's quite a bit of, of overlap between um, result groups. Um, and I'm uh, particularly active in the working group of RG1 on the system trinity protection. Um, otherwise uh, referred to as mainstreaming protection. Um, and another colleague is uh, active in the RG1 group on counterterrorism. But those are also issues addressed in RG4 uh, and 3, respectively. It's not clear to me how these are actually talking to each other. Um, and just to take the, the case of in RG1, we've never heard of anything being done in RG4 on collective outcomes that would link up and I don't know if they've heard anything from RG1 on what is being done on mainstream protection slash centrality protection as far as concerns um, collective outcomes as well. Um, so I was just wondering how, how that sort of cross-cutting conversation and coherence, uh, harmonization, et cetera, was being addressed. Um, Manisha, you want to? Yeah, uh, one easy question. The, the disability inclusion guidelines, the launch, is that confirmed for the 12th now? Because I know it was scheduled and then it was changed. Yes. And is that here or in New York? And, and then also, in terms of having known the ISC for a long time, the Secretariat shifting to OCHA was always a big question mark in terms of the impartiality of the Secretariat. Is that still an issue? Is OCHA, it's become very much part of OCHA. Is that impartiality of the Secretariat there? And I understand you're not only the Chief of the ISC Secretariat, but you're also doing a few other jobs in OCHA, which then... Well, you're too well informed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sort of wondering sort of how is OCHA really approaching the IAC in that sense? Is it really providing an impartial secretariat or have they taken you over to do other work? So how is that balance being maintained? And then finally around the reference groups, because you didn't really talk about what's happening in like the gender reference group. Uh, you mentioned MHPSS. Gender, when the IAC has gone through previous structures, the gender reference group was one of those that had been recommended to be dropped and it has persisted in its 
lifetime um, <laughs> reference groupness. So just wondering what they're actually doing now. All right, let's start with that. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, uh, no, I mean, I think we're, we're dancing around the issue. Um, yeah, for, for the reference groups, there's a lot of a closer look uh, that needs to be done. Um, I know there were structures within these entities associated with the IC that were really advocating very hard at the highest levels to remain within the IC. I will confess I was not in support of that because I said we focus on these four structures, the committee supported by the deputies, OPAG, EDG. We don't need anything else to fulfill the priorities, the strategic priorities, vision, and, the, the, and implement the decisions of the committee. Uh, but there's been a lot of advocacy for the entities to exist, so they are there. Uh, there's a bit of a firewall between the formal structures and these entities for a reason, because we, we needed to focus a lot of our attention to make the formal structures work really well, and that's what we've been doing since January and since they've been established in May. Um, now there's closer scrutiny or closer look at what are these five reference groups, what are these five entities doing, what are their terms of reference, what guidelines, tools are coming out with the IC logo that are not going for the OPAC. So we're shifting now. That's why it is added as an agenda item in the OPAC meeting, because the, the, their deliverables are very different. And we need, and, and it's been re the reason why it's been added to the OPAC is because OPAC members have asked uh, questions about some of these entities. Not, not to pick on the gender reference group, but all of them need a closer look. Uh, because there is a responsibility and there is an accountability aspect in terms of being part of that slide, let's say so. So that's all that I'm going to say for now. <laughs> um, uh, on the Secretariat and its impartiality, um, it's, it remains impartial. I mean, I think a lot of it, and I, and I think in the first OPAC meeting, they were really, really very direct, and I liked the, the direct questions and comments about the role of the IC Secretariat, the neutrality of the IC Secretariat, and I can't remember which OPAC member, but he hit it on the on the head. It's like, it's it's an issue of trust. So whether you, you trust the Secretariat, the members of the Secretariat to do an honest job, to deliver what is good for the system, yes or no? I hope the track record from the past year and a half and before, that there is trust in the composition of the Secretariat to be able to do a job that will help the system regardless of, um, you know, where the Secretariat is housed. Um, yes, yeah, for sorry. the sake of uh, understanding better the question, who, uh, which entity was hosting the Secretariat before? Because you mentioned that... Was it the head of the Secretariat was uh, seconded from a member of the IIC. But it was always sorry. hosted in Ocha. Yeah. It was okay. always hosted in Ocha. So but this has not changed. Uh, so the, the head of the Secretariat and the, and the Secretariat staff as well were all, seconded no, by... No, no, no. The head of the Secretariat was seconded from another agency. The Secretariat okay. members were always OCHA. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's actually an, an opportunity for a plea, which we've made bilateral to different organizations, and I say it here again. Uh, the ownership of the IC members in the Secretariat is critical. So please, in terms of secondments, whether it's full-time secondments, part-time secondments, the more you have IC members that... Uh, make up the composition of the Secretariat, the more you yourself will also have confidence in terms of what the work is, the work that's happening there, that's uh, ongoing there. So uh, help us address some of the questions about the neutrality of the Secretariat by being part of the, of the Secretariat. Do you have so, comments now? Uh, from a member state, because I couldn't get any from the members. I ended up getting, you know, from the member states, which is great. Member states, states is a, a member state, one member state, one member state. Or number state. So, but again, another controversial issue. It's okay. Was it was it the real question? No, my question was more like, is it, was it Turkey? Because <laughs> 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 just moved to Turkey. That was going to be no, I'm I wish I'll try. Actually, that's a good a good point. <laughs> no, but uh, no. so, but in terms of the other role with regards to the branch, now because there is a branch now that I'm. First of January, I'll be responsible for, again, it's a question of trust. So you'll see that in terms of the role of the branch, is shifting. So it's in terms of focus, it's more of an interagency approach and perspective in terms of a service provider for the organizations, rather than pushing, you know, certain issues that are not of relevance. So is it, is it straightforward? Is it easy? 
definitely not. But, but that's what I'm saying. It's an issue of trust. Just, you know, you know the IC Secretariat colleagues relatively well and um, uh, be our supporters to continue to play a very neutral and impartial role. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it's not straightforward, but be our supporters, uh, you know, to make sure that this uh, continues. 12th of November, inshallah, yes, it is the, <laughs> the launch date. So, um, uh, yeah, I think we've already had the ERC confirmed, uh, as well as the, um, I don't know whether it's going to be the Secretary General or another USG delegated by the Secretary General, but it's quite set in stone. Uh, it's going to be in New York, inshallah, and there's going to be a second launch event uh, in Geneva, the date to be determined. Um, overlaps between the reason, uh, re result groups, um, yes, um, uh, that is a risk. So what the, what the way we've tried to do it, because as I've mentioned, nothing happens organically. Everyone is just swamped with the work that they're doing in addition to their regular jobs. So um, some results groups co-chairs are more proactive and they speak to the other co-chairs to find out what are they doing. RG4 and RG5 co-chairs are really, really very good at that. As a matter of fact, they attend each other's meetings and, and they do joint work. Uh, RG1 and RG3, especially on counterterrorism legislation, they also speak um, uh, closely to make sure that there's clarity in terms of what the RG3 is doing vis-a-vis -vis COTER and what RG1 is doing. Uh, in addition to this, all the co-chairs are copied in each other's um, uh, correspondences, messages, documents. Um, hopefully they have time to read <laughs> like, you know, hundreds of emails. You know, circulating around. But in, in, addition, in addition to this, every two uh, months or every three months, I hold an all co chairs meeting specifically for that purpose. Mm -hmm. So the 10 co chairs come together, they have the chance to talk about okay, what are they working, what are the areas of the complementarity, what are the areas of overlaps, how can we avoid it? Um, it's, uh, it's an effort to avoid you know, these duplications and make sure that you know, they speak to each other. Hopefully, the chairs themselves are able to trickle that into the results group's work. I'm sure some do it more than others or better than others. Um, but if you have other suggestions in terms of how we can address that, please, um, you know, I'm happy to hear that as well. Uh, the RGs, RGs are um, in theory uh, in place for the two year of the biennium work plan, so 2019-2020. But the ERC made it very clear that one year from the establishment of the results groups, they will be reviewed very informally to see are they relevant are they delivering um, or not? Uh, because, and, and for, for, for the committee, uh, as I mentioned, this slide doesn't exist. The only box that officially exists is the committee. And I know in the beginning there was a lot of questions and concerns and resistance. You know, what is the IC Secretariat? Why are you getting involved? Why are you pushing for this? And it's not for us. It's because we know what the committee needs and we know uh, the repercussions if we are not very serious about the results groups delivering on the priorities and the decisions of the committee. It, two things are going to happen. First is uh, they're not doing their job because they were created to support the committee. Uh, second of all, um, the, uh, even if the topic is important, if, it, if, the, if the principals themselves sitting in this committee do not include a meeting saying that this topic is important, then it cannot feature in any of the other structures. And that's why it's a plea. The big elephants in the room issues, topics that you feel so strongly need to be addressed, don't raise them in the result group. Make sure your principals and the committee raise them and make sure that they are tabled. But not, not only as a table, okay, we need to make sure that, like one of the topics was to ensure that protection is a standing agenda item in the principals meeting. For what purpose? When you, when you suggest a topic, to think about what outcome do you want from it. So already the principals have tasked the other structures to prioritize uh, protection, to mainstream protection. So I'm all for standing agenda items, but it has, you have to see where you want to land with it, what type of outcome. Because if it's not a decision from the committee, it cannot be prioritized by the other structures. Climate is another one. Climate. We've had the number, like, um, uh, I've done a round of calls to find out what needs to be in the committee agenda uh, for the 5th of December. Mark sent out two emails asking what topics do you need to have at the address of the committee. Climate change was not one of these topics, plus other big elephants in the room. So again, it's a plea. If there's a topic or issue that is so important, you need to advocate internally within your own organizations to, if it's that important, corporately, to make sure it's there. Otherwise, it's uh, not going to feature in the work of the different uh, groups. 
so uh, yeah so so probably by the end by by the end of the first quarter of 2020 there's going to be a very light uh, reflection on yes not only the results groups but the entities associated with ISC. yeah uh, i can tell you the easiest thing to do is for the secretary to manage four, bo four boxes but we don't want that because if you lose the rgs you lose the inclusivity piece that's the concern that i have so uh, yeah Thank you. So, and the guidelines on uh, disabilities? Sure. Trust. The and there will be a launch in uh, only or? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Sorry. I missed. I missed that one. Sorry. <laughs> Just. Uh, <laughs> no, we are. We are reaching. Uh, we are reaching the end. Um, and. Um, I think it's, uh, it's okay. No, no questions and so on. We're just around the corner. Anytime, again, please. Uh, uh, again, maybe just a last uh, uh, plea uh, from my um, end. Um, first, trust the Secretariat. We're trying our best to support uh, structures succeeding. It's for all of our uh, benefit. Um, uh, be, you know, aware of the seats that you have in these different structures and use your voices uh, more strongly. And don't be shy, shy of making sure the big elephants in the room are raised uh, to make sure that the system operates better. So just a few, please. Thanks, and, and we, we'll take those recommendations uh, forward. So uh, thank you very much, Marvat, for coming and, uh, and colleagues for uh, joining, uh, joining this meeting online or in person. So um, on that, I close the meeting. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.